So a fishbowl conversation, uh, the idea hit here and why there is an empty chair is that any of you can jump in on this panel at any time. Uh, these three have graciously agreed to start things off for us. Anytime there's a, and they're, they're each gonna get a turn to talk, everybody's going to get a turn to talk. Anytime you feel like you have something to say about the topic at hand uh, or the current question that's been posed to the panel, bring yourself up here and sit in the open chair, whatever open chair is open at the time. And then one of these three, and if you are already up here and someone comes and sits down, you will decide amongst yourselves very quickly, someone to go back and join the audience. And that way we'll have kind of a rotate, rotating cast uh, of characters up here. This is a very characterful group here, so this is gonna be good. Um, that way everybody can have a say if they want to have a say. Uh, and if you're not comfortable joining the conversation, you can uh, sit back and relax in your chair out there and drink a beer. That's the thing that you're allowed to do legally. In Which the none States of America. Not even close. No? Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Except I saw one. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think, I think Leon, I was like, I saw I think one. Leon no. can probably share. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. So it's, basically, so it's basically like um, if you want the next. I don't know if I need a mic. If, if you want the next game in uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, you put your quarter up onto the arcade machine so you know you have dibs the next time someone. Yeah, but in this case, your quarter is your rear end. Yes. And the council Fine. chair is the arcade right. machine. Okay, all right, just make sure. Everybody got that? It's, there's no way that that is an analogy that really rang true with basically anyone. <laughs> what the heck is an arcade? <laughs> All right, so the, what? Nothing. Okay, the topic tonight is mentorship, uh, and that can be kind of a wide topic, but in particular, I think we we'll obviously want to talk about uh, mentorship in software engineering. Um, it's, I think it's, I think it's very important. So we'll just seed the pot with me saying like this is super important, and that's why I wanted to talk about it tonight. Uh, but we've got three different uh, sort of ranges of experience here as far as. Uh, being a mentor or being a mentee. Um, I'll let them tell more about themselves right now. Oh, yeah, we didn't do a, like an a introduce yourself at the very beginning of the meeting. No, I'm sorry. I know it's been a while, baby, but we canceled those. Okay, okay. Yeah. The executives are just not happy with their performance in the readings. Yeah. And, uh... The acoustics do not help. So I am Davey. I, like Miles, uh, work fretless. Thanks. <laughs> I like you too. Uh, I like Miles. <laughs> Work at Fretless. Um, and uh, I do a fair amount of teaching uh, right now. In fact, I'm teaching the Extern Boot Camp for TechPoint. This is our third summer doing that thing. Uh, it's pretty cool, and a whole bunch of them showed up today. So I suppose I have been in that mentor position a few times, and I have uh, something of an apprentice of sorts uh, working with me now. And I, I wish. I had had more of a mentor in my uh, early days as a developer. Um, but what I did have was Miles, uh, who was about the same level of junior as me, uh, but we were both hyper curious and just egged each other on. You know, he would read one tech book, I'd read another, we'd compare notes, um, et cetera. I would be terrified to come to meetups, so he would drag me along to meetups and then he would do hostile takeovers of them. Um, <laughs> Like, like this one? Yes. It was not hostile. <laughs> but yes, he, he took it over in short order. Um, so yeah, that's a little of my history. Hey guys, I'm Dana, and I am the apprentice of which he speaks. Um, and I have been uh, with Fretless now for since April. Uh, but before that, I had several interns that I used to work with, um, and so I was a mentor to them. And I love doing that. That was super fun. Uh, but now I'm in a position where I'm learning so much from Davey and the other folks at Fretless. Um, so I have lots of thoughts, but I, I feel like I've found myself as a mentee in all of my previous jobs. And I think it's super important to have someone to challenge you um, and to uh, take you to that next level because sometimes you might not do that yourself. So I think it's really important. Um, and I'm excited to talk about it tonight. So thanks for. Hi, I'm Andrew. Uh, I work with Moby. Wow, 
<laughs> don't like hearing myself on my phone. Um, uh, I had recently been uh, given the ability to be a mentor at Moby for a few developers, um, and I myself have had um, some good mentors uh, with Chris Benoit, Miles, um, and then just other senior devs at Moby that have helped me out along the way to get to where I'm, uh, I'm at. Uh, I've been doing development for about three years now, um, and looking forward to this uh, visual conversation, so. Awesome. I figured out how to work the mics. That's what's awesome. You guys are awesome, too. So, one thing I want to say before I kick off with the question here is if any of you have a question that you think would be great uh, within this topic, uh, flag me down, raise your hand for something, and I'll come, I'll come up there and I might just give you the mic. That could happen. So, my first question is, uh, and maybe I'm just jumping like too far right into the topic, but my first question is, um, what are the keys to being a good mentor? Or what, what, what's the, what are the traits that make up a good mentor? Uh, to me, I think a good mentor probably needs to always make themselves available to be open to help you out with something. Um, I mean, you're not going to be able to grow if you're not able like, to pair together or have time to be able to talk to someone if they're always busy doing something else. Um, I have tried to make myself available to the um, uh, the employees of Moby that I am mentoring the developers there. Um, I also think that when you are pairing with someone, you probably need to take a hands-off approach, let them do, um, uh, let, let them actually do the work while you're just helping guide them. Um, because I've noticed just in the short time that I've been doing this that um, it definitely helps out a lot if someone does it themselves as opposed to you uh, driving and doing it and showing it to them. Um, I will pass the mic down. Well, I will say that some of the best mentors that I've had have really challenged me. Um, so they kind of believed in me maybe even more than I believed in myself. And I found that really helpful uh, because then I kind of rose to the occasion. So I think as a mentor, you have to maybe challenge folks to go above and beyond maybe what they think they can do themselves um, and just be supportive, but I think also being firm. So of course, before this, I was looking up like, what are the different types of mentors? Um, and there's one that's a challenger. And I think that to me, at least, that's the way I respond is if you challenge me to do something, I'll kind of rise to that occasion or do the best that I can to get there. Um, but also, uh, personally, I like to have good feedback. So um, I think as a mentor, it's really important uh, once those the person that you're mentoring um, does that or, or completes the challenge that you gave them, I think it's important to, to give them that feedback like, hey, you did a great job. Like this is where maybe you can improve or this is an area that you were really strong in. Um, because I think feedback, even if it's like, okay, maybe you need to work on this a little bit more, is really important so they know where they stand. Uh, so those are some of the best mentors that I've had have been both of those things, both challenging but also supportive and being like, okay, you could do this, I know you can get there, even if you might not think you can, or maybe it'll take you a little bit longer than you think. But um, yeah, I think those are two really important traits of a mentor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in here and just kind of, I'm way over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just kind of list these things out that I think I've heard. Uh, so be available. Um, let the mentee do the work. Challenge the mentee. Uh, but believe in the mentee. Make that clear. And there was sort of a, there was a 2B sort of thing, or maybe a number three in there for you, Dana. And that is uh, give constructive feedback. Right. All right, we got five so far. I just wanted to call those out. I think that's important. Go ahead, Dee. So these are good traits for human beings to have, whatever role they may be playing in any relationship. But um, uh, humility and empathy are always good. Um, when you're a mentor, keep in mind you're just because you are the more senior person at this job in this relationship right now. Um, you are not the hottest snot in the land. 
Um, so keep that in mind and don't don't be condescending um, with with juniors or even if there's kind of an explicit uh, mentor mentee relationship. Um, hopefully that goes without saying, but um, reminding yourself of that sometimes when you start to show off or or whatever, um, don't show off. Um, was the other thing humility and oh yeah empathy. Um, <clears throat> Part of that uh, feeds into the whole giving good, humane feedback. Um, both giving and receiving feedback are, are tough to do. Um, I know a lot of times as, as a receiver of feedback, um, when, when someone gives you some feedback, it's always slightly tempting for your first internal reaction to be, well, screw you, I don't need you. Um, and don't, don't do that, they may have a point. Um, <clears throat> and when you're giving feedback, there are, there are things you can do, there are phrases you can use that um, help not to immediately put people on the defensive. Um, so if you can kind of notice how people respond when you talk to them, and you when you when you see those signs of defensiveness, pay attention to what you might have done to trigger that um, and try to avoid those things. There's actually um, a really good podcast, I think it's even a series of podcasts. Uh, so there's, there's a podcast series called Manager Tools and a related one called Career Tools. Um, Career Tools covers everything under the sun from like, there's a half hour long uh, podcast just on introducing yourself to people. And like, well, what if they say their name and you didn't? Do you, do you ask them to repeat it or not? I'm not gonna tell you, you should listen to the podcast. But um, in Manager Tools, they have a, a podcast on giving feedback and uh, it's, it's really good. And there are so many scenarios they lay out. And it's a really useful thing to be able to do effectively. Um, to, to reference another uh, piece of management advice that I think is, is really useful um, from Radical Candor, uh, just just read that whole book is kind of kind of what I what I want to say. But um, uh, one of the there's this whole like four quadrant thing. I don't know how many quadrants could there possibly be. It's a quadrant. <laughs> of course there are four. Um, but uh, one of the, one of the mistakes that, that people often make is that book calls ruinous empathy. Um, and if you are trying so darn hard to be nice to people that you never actually give them any dang feedback and they have no idea where they stand with you, um, that's that's as bad as, as being, um, you know, going too far in the other direction as far as helping them in their careers. You know, it has, that book is full of anecdotes, but, you know, if, so, if someone, um, if you are in the position where you have to fire someone and you fire them and it comes as a total shock to them, they had no idea, they weren't even meeting your expectations, you did something wrong um, by not letting them know along the way where they stood. This is a little more toward management than, than the mentor-mentee thing. But the point is, um, giving feedback is, the ability to give feedback well is a skill that must be developed, so don't be afraid to kind of do some research into that. Is there anybody in here who feels like they've gotten decent at giving feedback? Like Bob said, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah? So I would say that, like, uh, the way that I write. Uh, Do you want to see you up there? It's just for you. Hi, I'm Stephen Foley. I work at Moby. Um, so I would say that when I first started writing for Wes, um, I was probably an arrogant little shit. <laughs> and probably uh, telling people, like, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that, or whatever. Uh, but I find now that I uh, um, I usually pose feedback in the form of a question, like, uh, can we do this better? Uh, would it be better if we thought, like, I, I don't know, I think you guys get the gist. Like, uh, posing it as a question <clears throat> can sometimes uh, not only get them to contribute to a conversation, but it also lets them know that it's a, a two-way thing, because you're, you're working with someone, you're not... Uh, directing them, telling them what to do in most cases, unless you're a manager. Um, but I, I find that, that posing your feedback as a question sometime and letting them come to the conclusion themselves can be really helpful. That's really helpful to say. Hey, you're you're stuck, buddy. But you kind of have to stay now. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the way I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. sorry. It's a trap. <laughs> well, that was in the bad answer. I'm sorry. It's a trap. All right. Stuck now. It'll be all right. Uh, 
don't want to ask any hard questions. Dana needs to stay up there, though. She actually prepared and took notes. So. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I do have a que- I have a question for the group. Yeah. Um, how do you go about like asking someone to be your mentor, or do you directly ask them, or do you just like start following them around? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Invite them to coffee, and then um, socially. There's a chair. Give them a spot. No, I gotta go. No, you have to go. So you just assume among yourselves who goes. Yeah. Uh, Invite them to coffee, um, socially, and then trick them into being your mentor by just asking them for advice to see if they catch on. But, but, but really, just stuff like inviting people to coffee, whether they drink coffee or not, or just stuff like that. Um, that's a good enough way. I mean, she asked me to get coffee. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I met her. She I was a total stranger. Um, and she, she like sent, a, sent an email to everyone in Bloomington <laughs> and said, hey, you have coffee with me until she found someone said yes. No, not really, but. <laughs> yeah, totally. Just, just ask people to get together. Say you'd like to pick their brain on some topic or whatever. It doesn't have to be super formal. I don't think saying you can't sit by him necessarily, just for the record. What's that? I don't think you even saying you can't sit by him. Well, he said somebody's got to go, and then I have to say, well, I guess it's my. Uh, no, I found the, the easiest way, um, this kind of piggybacks off of Coley with the asking the questions thing, uh, and I know I've done this with Miles, I'm not encouraging everyone to do that, or maybe I am, you know, uh, is to just be like, hey man, can I pick your brain on something? If you have any level of contact with the developer as is, just reach out to them, Slack, Flowdoc, whatever. Always be sure to ask, like, hey, when you've got the time, because you don't know, you know, you may not know what they're working on that particular day, but it is really easy to just be like, Hey, I got a question about strong params. Um, I know that you were the guy that gave the talk on that, Chris. When you get when you get a chance, can you answer one of my questions on that? Uh, and then just let it simmer, because from there it's it's up to them to answer. It's on their own time. They're much more open, and you may get. I mean, be prepared for like a, hey, not today. I'm super busy, but I don't think I've ever had that happen. And it also opens the door to further questions, because when they're already answering your question, then you can be like, oh, cool. So like. So in this one case that I'm working on right now, and then it just kind of snowballs from there. Bye. I hope you're coming back up there, up here. <laughs> oh, I sat front and center. It's awkward. There's a camera pointed like right in my face. <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, so there, are, you can you can also form kind of a more formal but outside of work uh, mentorship relationship. Um, I actually was, I guess, kind of a mentor for a gentleman uh, that actually was started here at the Speakeasy on that board over there. We used to clip like um, kind of, I forget what they called it, nice things we would do for our neighbors here in the Speakeasy sort of thing. Um, but I think you can do this along the lines of uh, just asking someone to coffee and then kind of discussing doing that regularly. Uh, I said I would like help somebody learn Ruby and meet with them once a month. Um, so a guy contacted me and was like, seriously, you'll, you'll do that? I was like, yeah, I mean, it's no big deal, right? He's like, no, 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 no. nobody else has talked to you about this yet? Like, it's kind of a big deal. He's like, can we get, like, I'll buy you lunch? And, yeah, so that's better than I thought I was going to get out of this. It sounds great. Um, and we ended up uh, getting lunch for like every month for at least a year. And then he decided he wanted to learn Ruby. And instead, he was going to be our sales guy. So that worked out really well, too. Uh, but, you know, if you contact somebody that you kind of want to be your mentor and ask them to copy, get, if you get comfortable with them at copy, just say, hey, could we, could we do this on a regular basis? Um, and is there anything I can do for you, uh, you know, to, to you know help you out or, or give back a little bit? Um, There's two different stories, incidentally, where that led to the person getting hired, um, like forming those forming those relationships. Yeah. Um, 
if we hired both of those people as it turned out yeah um but don't necessarily do this to fish for a job but you know if you get coffee with people that's how, that's how you get hired happens. yeah uh, <laughs> um but there was actually another thing i wanted to say but i don't know what it was so you should probably say something while i think of it uh, I failed to introduce myself. My name is Benjamin. Uh, I work for Iris Works, which is a uh, part of DT Starts. So I work on there part time and then half our office on the And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> uh, that's a membership, I'm sorry, uh, a mentorship program that uh, I've been a part of for a long time called RailsMentors.org. And it's really just a site where you can sign up and say, I want to be either a mentor or want to be a mentee. And you give out a list of topics that you're willing to mentor. And people just, you get emails every now and then. And I help those people out. And over the course of, you know, 10, 20 emails, they usually kind of drift off because they're doing their own thing. You're trying to help them out. And I enjoy doing that very much. And I don't think a lot of people do that. Yeah, it's a good program. That's awesome. But there are other programs like that. Um, did you guys, you, you did a, was it a master class? Like just having some kind of regular group like that, or even like the, this one? Uh, yeah, so that's, yeah. That's, that's the thing that I meant to talk about that I forgot about. So like mastermind group is what that was called. But like um, it doesn't necessarily have to be that doesn't necessarily have to be a huge uh, experience differential between you, of course. It's also very useful to get together with people who you could just consider your peers, um, who have similar levels of experience or whatever. Um, you always know more than somebody else, right? And everyone who's at the same experience level as you has experience that's different from yours still. And it can be really valuable to just get together with your peers and talk shop a little bit. Um, that's uh, part of what I've always loved about NDRB and uh, what really grabbed me 10 years ago when we started coming to it um, was like at that stage, you know, when, where Miles and I worked at that time, we were the only developers in like a 40 person company that did not make software. Um, so we were the only two people who did that. So we weren't hanging around grizzled uh, senior developers with a ton of experience. So uh, we learned from blogs and podcasts and all that kind of stuff. And then from going to meetups and talking to our peers, because um, we weren't hanging around professionally uh, with those folks. But just finding out what other people are working on, what uh, issues they've worked through, um, inevitably you'll find something they know that you don't and probably the other way around too. Um, and if you are in a, the mentor position, be prepared to learn from the mentee. Um, and I don't just mean like um, some sort of uh, cheesy uh, third act of a heartwarming sob story where you realize that, oh, I was the student all along. Um, <laughs> but like, genuinely, we were, we were actually just talking about um, uh, the first year of this boot camp. Um, Seth taught it with me, and Seth was fresh out of the boot camp himself at that time and was, you know, going to be a senior any second, basically, because um, that's just the freak he is. But um, we were we were covering uh, vanilla JavaScript with no libraries that first week, and he just got out of a like a 12 week Ruby on Rails bootcamp. He didn't know vanilla JavaScript at all. Sorry, um, but that uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was his teacher. But but um, uh, but the but the first week of class, I learned something from him about JavaScript. Um, because he had he had been of course cramming and trying to learn this stuff, and so he was reading kind of up to date sources, and I had been uh, I was writing like 1997 JavaScript still, so I was like, what do you mean there's an ES5 um, <laughs> in 2015 <laughs> uh, when uh, ESX was out? So uh, I I learned it a lot just by like hanging around someone who was was learning it fresh. Um, so be prepared to again it goes back to not thinking you're the hottest snot in the world. Um, be prepared to learn from the person that you think uh, is the student. Um, related to that, by the way, hi, I'm Chris. I, I, I taught at the Iron Yard for two years, six cohorts of students. I'm now the director of engineering at Six there, so I manage a team of six. Um, the uh, specifically to piggyback off of yours, like when I the first cohort I taught at the Iron Yard, 
I walked in and it's like I couldn't remember how to make a basic Ruby class, like at all, because I've been doing Rails development at that point for like eight years, and it's like I like I never need to do that. Like, what what's initialize do? Um, <laughs> I had like no idea. Um, and in the course of that two years and seeing students come through and seeing like every error message imaginable um, and answering every question and having to explain everything over and over again. Like by the time I left there and I started at Sixter, like the first three weeks were just go through the error reporting and just knock out bugs left and right, left and right. It's like, oh, I've seen exactly that thing 500 times from students. Um, like it is the quickest way to level yourself up as a developer is to teach other people, especially junior people because they will think of things and they will do things that you have forgotten how to do or you like don't even think of. Um, it makes you a far better developer the more often you can actually mentor and see code and help with code. Chris has a question. Uh, I'm not sitting in a chair because I don't want to throw anyone in the lines on context clues. I don't have an answer to that question. Uh, <laughs> What we, I don't want to get too far from the original question before asking the other side, but what do you see as a good quality in mentees? What do you see benefit the other side of this relationship? Not necessarily what you look for, don't even look for mentees, but what do you see as a good quality in mentees? Um, I already have the mic, so I'm okay. um, Asking questions and not being afraid to ask questions. Um, especially if you have a good mentor relationship, hopefully they've told you ahead of time, like, A, you're not bothering me. Like, that's what I'm here for, is for you to ask me questions. Because um, I want to help. Um, as long as you know you're in that sort of relationship, like, just ask questions. Like, don't stay stuck for very long. Don't feel like you're bothering them. And more than that, like, don't give up. Um, that is the one thing, like, students, the ones who struggled the most were the ones who, like, thought it was them or thought, like, there wasn't any way out of this. Like, students who I had to explain over and over again that, like, the Computer only does exactly what you told it to do, and you're not going to break anything that can't be fixed. Um, we're the ones who struggle the most. So as long as you have the, the mindset of like, I can fix this, and your mentor is there to help, and you ask for that help. Because especially like mentors are generally more senior, they're busy and everything else. And so they're not, even the best one isn't always going to be like, hey, I wonder how person X is doing. So occasionally you have to pop your head up and ask a question about something you're stuck on or something like that. Um, that's probably the biggest piece of advice I give. Um, and you know, if you're hopefully if you're like seeking out these relationships, this isn't your attitude to begin with. But um, it helps not to just be focused on getting the thing done, whatever the thing is. If you need help on something because you need to ship a, a particular feature or because, you know, if you're in a boot camp and you have a homework assignment and you just want to get the dang homework done as fast as possible. Um, if your goal is to actually learn about the topic, um, you know, just make sure that's where your head is um, when you're not just asking the questions, but uh, as you're receiving the answers, don't be in too much of a rush to get to the answer. Um, be prepared to to find a new level of understanding on on the underlying topic. Don't be too focused on uh, shipping a particular thing. Yeah. And for the mentor, don't be don't be in a rush to just get this person out of your face. Yeah. Right. Don't be. Um, <laughs> which goes back to the whole. Don't just like push them away from the keyboard and take over. Um, try to actually help them do that thing. Um, I know there's an anecdote from someone in the room who used to work at the Apple store who, who managed a team there who um, got in the habit of like keeping his hands behind his back while, while helping uh, team members uh, through a problem. So it was impossible for him to just take the machine away from them and, and do the work himself. Um, he had to use his words. Um, so as the mentor, use your words to help uh, the mentee through the problem. Don't don't just do the work for them, for sure. I didn't see this for myself intentionally, but you just said something that reminded me of probably one of the best lessons that I've learned uh, is that getting it wrong is not the wrong way to do it. Uh, you, you do something wrong 10 times, 
you see what that wrong way accomplished, you see what your result was, uh, now you have 10 tools for when you want that result. The fact that you didn't get the answer on the first try uh, doesn't mean that the, the nine times before that weren't an answer that you can use later. Um, that that seemed to me kind of counterintuitive in the beginning, um, but I got, I got it wrong all these times. Well, you're not getting it wrong. You're just you're finding a bunch of ways that didn't work for this situation, but now you have all those tools for when you want the answer that you found on this wrong attempt. Or Mike now. Hey, Miles, I had a question. Yeah. I'm sure you just want to. I do. You know, I want a good mic. Hey, I'm Steve from Springbuck. Uh, it's a question, so I'm not going to join the panel. But I've been trying to form this question. I'm not sure the best way to ask it. But I guess, what are your thoughts, opinions on? sort of a, an explicit mentorship program that is like very structured. We are going to do this mentor-mentee relationship versus just creating a culture of like implicit mentorship, right? Because I think, like, like it or not, like senior engineers, like junior engineers are always watching them, right? They're always observing how they behave and how they speak and how they write code, and at least uh, the good ones who want to learn and want to grow hard. So, is it more valuable to like have all of your seniors and all of your leaders and managers on the same page with regards to like this is how you know, so that we can bring up this, this talented pool of kind of junior engineers, or whatever? Like, this is sort of the culture that we expect and we establish, or is it better to say like, well, you know, you three are going to be cynical and you're not, you know, you're not going to be good mentors, so we're going to create. Just a. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, this is good about I'm not drunk in the experience at all. Um, you know, and, and these three are going to be the mentor because they're really good at it. Like, which, which thing is better? Oh, sorry. I don't uh, have personal experience to give input on this, but uh, for another uh, talk that I did recently, I, I researched the topic of mentorship a lot. Um, and I, uh, the answer that I found to that question. Uh, which seems really intuitive, is have uh, have a scaffold, but a flexible one. Um, have a definite channel of communication that's established uh, so that, so that like uh, several people have said at this point, the mentee knows that they're not causing an issue, they're not bothering anybody by bringing up a question. Uh, they know that they're in this relationship intentionally, but keep it very flexible, because everybody's going to learn differently uh, everybody's going to get different things out of the process. If you give 10 people the same assignment and it's all got a deadline on it, uh, they're not all going to learn the same way. So I think, uh, yes, have a program, but it's not gospel. Just uh, let it grow as the students do. Don't just assume that it will take care of itself. So if you're going to do the more implicit version, um, make sure your seniors understand that it is part of their job to be available and uh, to be helpful. Like when we, we talk sometimes about what we view as a senior developer and we break down technical capability into several different things. And one of those things is um, to seek to create solutions that other folks, including less experienced folks, can learn from. And that's an important thing. Again, don't be so focused on shipping that you write something that no one else in the world, including yourself amongst them now, uh, can ever understand. So that's just, that's just part of the job. It just needs to be part of the job. And if you're leading a team, make sure your developers understand that that's part of the job, um, especially if you're not going to have any sort of explicit program for that. I like to think that uh, anyone in the room that I'm in can be a mentor, at least in some way. But I like to say, I like to do that thing. Please come see me, and uh, we'll work together. But they're not. a lot of times I'll be on a team and I don't know anything about this. You are the expert. Show me how it works and maybe I can help make it better in some way. Or at least we can establish a rapport. Um, I like doing code reviews. And I think that's a great place to do very like, like touch mentorship. Um, 
you try to find the good thing in, in every PR or every, you know everything you look at. Like every time I work with somebody, there's something good there, and maybe you have to dig it out from some other stuff. But like that's a cool trick. I didn't know about that. Even if I don't want that in my code base, I want someone to know that is cool. Thank you. Uh, let's do it a little simpler, maybe, or something like that. But like, uh, I don't know. I, I always, I do feel like I'm the one learning a lot of the time. And uh, whenever you do, I make a point to point it out because it really, I think it jazzes people up to go, oh man, I'm teaching too. And I want them to be able to have that opportunity to teach even when I'm off the team. Please do. Mm -hmm. okay, I just got here. Go. <laughs> so, caveat: I only learned software engineering once, so I only have a small sample size. But um, when I first started, you are joining a new company, and so meeting all these new people is intimidating enough. On top of learning software engineering, so trying to like. It, it, it's one thing to say that everyone is open to ask questions, but when you don't know anybody, it's really intimidating. So I believe having like a set mentor program where there's one person, there's entire like, you're you're explicitly told like, go ask this person questions if you have questions. It's very valuable because that kind of takes some of the pressure and awkwardness off of not only learning but also trying to become part of a team. Introduce yourself. Oh. I'm Steve from Springbuck, not the other one. <laughs> Wait, not the other one or the other one? The original. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what? Re related to that, like uh, your senior developers, like you mentioned earlier, like junior developers, when they come and they look and see what the senior developers do. And so as if you have an environment where the senior developers are openly asking questions and openly admitting that they don't know necessarily how this works, it sets a good example. Like it's one of the things I'm very conscientious about. Like I could just like ask in a DM in Slack, like you know, how does this work or something like that. But instead, like ask it in the public channel. Make sure everybody sees it. Make sure everybody knows. Like I, you know, I'm the director of engineering. I've been here a long time. And I still have to ask questions because this thing's complicated as hell. And I don't understand half of it. Um, and as a junior, like we don't expect you to understand a third of it. <laughs> <laughs> Just to start out. I don't want to take a seat, but I just want to say a very quick thing. Um, yeah, sorry, that's totally not so it. If, I, if I'm uh, sharing a screen, and I, I even do this, even if it's as formal as a dang lecture, I will like open the docs on my shared screen and let them watch me look through the docs to understand, to, for one thing, to say I don't have all the answers off the top of my head. I don't know this stuff without looking it up. Um, but also, to, it can be really helpful to see how a senior dev. Okay, this is kind of a long answer for not. Sit senior. down. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also, it can be useful. Who's the newest one up here? Um, it can be uh, useful for them to see how a senior developer uses the docs, because I know uh, for me, I found API docs um, super intimidating at first. Um, it's just all these function signatures. Not that they knew that that's what they were called at the time. Um, and it just so um, looking through the docs myself while basically reading it out loud and um, uh, out loud recognizing oh so it means this and then we go like I did this today in class we have this uh, doc document document open okay so the first argument is this okay so what's that mean well let's try this value and see if that one works even if I know the answer that's how I figured it out the first time. So even so, sometimes sometimes in class, I'm genuinely like looking up a thing I don't know, and sometimes I'm trying to recreate the moment when I looked it up and figured it out the first time. Um, because uh, yeah, when you watch an online video or something like that, um, you're seeing like the fourth or fifth time that they actually built this thing. You're seeing the the perfect version, um, but they they experimented along the way and they generated all those same error messages too. So sometimes doing that, you know, don't be afraid to like. Don't feel like you need to go do this on another monitor um, so that they don't see that or something out. That got way too long. Uh, this is potentially obvious, but uh, sort of my question earlier, just the other side of that, uh, of what Chris was saying about asking questions in the public chat. Uh, I think the same goes for juniors and mentees. Uh, don't ask te technical questions in uh, direct message. 
always ask that in, in public chat, especially in a group setting like this. Uh, you are, I guarantee, not the only person that has that question. Uh, and it shows, uh, it shows the people that are afraid to ask it that it's okay. And now they also have the answer. Uh, you're, you're answering that question for everyone, not just yourself. So don't ask it in a one-to-one in -a -one chat. Ask it in the ARB Slack. Yeah, helpful resources. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron. Um, I, I don't work for Springbuck and haven't for like a year, but uh, that's why the cynical comment uh, was thrown out because I'm kind of cynical. Um, but to, to speak to your question about um, a formal mentorship program, I think in my opinion that's actually a really helpful thing to bring on junior devs and have it explicitly known that we do expect the senior devs to be open to answering questions, but by the same token, um, as was mentioned, you need some kind of flexibility. And one thing that um, wasn't, I don't think was mentioned, was um, personality. Um, you may have people who, um, you know, I, I can be, I can be a little cynical and understate things slightly every now and then. And people who, case in point, right? People who um, don't take well to to that kind of a, a, a salty personality, um, really that. I might not be the best possible mentor, but I do enjoy teaching people, and I do enjoy talking pe with people and walking them through solutions, but um, my cynical and somewhat bitter outlook on life might be something that people would just kind of be a little bit turned off by at times. He understates things, remember. What's that? I said he understates things, remember, yes. somewhat better. A little. Um, but. Um, speaking back to an earlier question about, um, I've recently started a new job with, with Sensu because you know it's an awesome company. Um, and even though um, every single one of these gray hairs tells you, yes, this is a senior as an age-wise engineer, um, I, I, have, I have been programming for quite some time, but I've started this new job with Ruby and there's no Rails and it's concurrent programming, so it's event machine. And I'm like, what the hell is this? So um, I've had to kind of shove aside my, my decade plus of experience with Rails and go, you know, um, there's a bunch of stuff I don't know. And it helps to, from characteristics that a mentee should have, one of them is humility. As was, you know, the, the mentor should be humble and realize that you're, you can learn stuff. But even as somebody with a ton of software experience, you're starting a new code base when you start a new job. And unless it is greenfield programming, there's a bunch of stuff in code that you've never seen before. So you need a mentor. Even if you know Rails inside and out, that code base is probably large enough that you're stuck. So you need somebody to walk you through it. So have some humility. Um, the other thing, be curious. Ask questions. And like you said, ask it in public. Don't be afraid to because somebody else is going to be afraid to. If you've got a whole cadre of, of new engineers starting at the same time, regardless of their level of experience, you may have people fresh out of boot camp and you may have people who have been using Rails for 12 years. Regardless, um, you're new to that code base, so you need a mentor. You need someone to walk you through. So um, that curiosity and that humility are great attributes for a mentee to have. Um, and so don't be afraid to, to ask questions. Um, that's, um, I guess that's all I have on that. I have kind of a follow-up question uh, that I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts on. Uh, I have seen it be a contentious topic before, so I just want to warn you of that. I also want to explicitly say that I cannot remember where I worked where this sort of humans existed. So this, is, this doesn't have anything to do with any company or person in the room for the record. Uh, how, how do you feel or what do you, what do you do, what do you think of the senior developer who is contributing code and shipping code um, who doesn't want to do any sort of mentorship at all beyond perhaps code review? Does that person keep on the team if they're a badass? Is it someone you force to mentor? Like, 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 Unresponsive? Or, like, or just 
Um, well, it, it looks like we've got somebody who has an answer. I'll think about it. I worked with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know him. Um, I think that everyone needs to, every uh, good mentee needs to realize uh, what, what has been harped on a handful of times, which is uh, you are asking the questions and you are trying to get insights, but at the same time, uh, there's a relationship upwards as well. And I think uh, in a lot of companies, there's going to be that old dinosaur that, and they don't necessarily have to be old because the particular person I'm thinking of isn't exactly uh, ancient, he's just crotchety. Uh, but that's, I mean, that, that's part of the trade-off. There's a uh, personality was mentioned before. There are certain personalities that are really well suited for being open and excited and genuinely curious for, for, um, for knowledge and helping share that with others, but you are going to have those people where they're just crotchety old dinosaurs and they just want to do their own thing. Um, you as a mentee, if, if that has to be the person you have to go through, just actively recognizing that you're going to tread lightly, you need to have specific questions. Uh, as a mentee, um, the interactions I had with this person, who just arbitrary individual, um, it worked best whenever I had a very specific question where I had narrowed it down as much as I could because I recognized this is somebody who does not want to offer much or any of their time. So the quicker I can outline, here's my issue, here's the things I've tried, here's the results I'm shooting for, I can kind of streamline it for them and if I can make that as easy as possible for them so that they can go back to their own crotchety world, we can both walk away happy. Uh, so there was this really awesome talk at RailsConf that was talking about your code base as a house that you live in and your team is like your family and no one wants to keep around uh, someone that like, doesn't want to talk to anybody else. So I say if that person doesn't want to exist in the ecosystem, then go let them create their own ecosystem. And, like what's, like soft, software engineering is a collaborative it's like it, no, no one is building software on their own. So to not want to help other people is like against like the ethos of the of the product, in my opinion. Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I I kind of have to agree with that um, because um, part of building a company is building teams, not just a, a team of the company. You've got a culture. Uh, around the company, you've got practices that you follow and values that you, sh ideally some shared values company-wide. Um, and I've, I've been employee, I've been a contractor. Um, in, a, in a contractor role, that may not be the worst thing. You know, if you're, if you're a contractor someplace and you just want to live in a box and you want to write your code and solve the problems, okay, that's, that's fine. You're solving the problems as an individual and then you just go home and don't worry about the company at the end of the day because you've got no vested interest in it. But if you've got a, an employee who is understood, yeah, you're supposed to be part of this team and you're an employee because you share the values of the company. Well, if one of the values of the company is mentor-mentee relationships, um, then they, they should kind of agree with that and accept it. Um, if the company doesn't value mentor-mentee relationships, um, for, you've probably got a problem in the first place. Um, but if you don't value that, well, then, okay, fine. Everybody can live in their own little box, but then you don't really have the collaborative effort that, that Steve was talking about. Um, so I guess that's... People are almost certainly writing unmaintainable code with that attitude, sure. too. Yeah, yeah. With, the, with their specific brain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, all were, we all write un unmaintainable code sure, at some point absolutely. or another. Um, I'm, they never write maintainable code. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of a multi-hundred line SQL statement I wrote. Um, <laughs> we do. We do. Yeah. So, sweet. So, uh, yeah, all right. I was gonna I was gonna call it in about five minutes. So if anybody has anything they've been wanting to say on like Dana that has all these notes.
you did all this research. You covered it all? Yeah. That was efficient. Uh, anybody have anything else they want to say about mentorship? Very open, brief. open forum. Very briefly. Um, the thing that Dan you know, actually reminded me of this, um, and Dave Jones came really close to this topic earlier when he was saying, um, if he's on a team and he's not necessarily an expert in that tech, he can still contribute something even if he doesn't understand that ecosystem super well. Um, if he can understand the, the problem at hand, he probably has some other experience that's relevant. Um, and so um, if you are a career switcher, for example, and you're maybe very uh, experienced at something other than software development, but you're a brand new software developer, you still have things to teach other people because all of the experience you've had in life up to that point still counts. It is not all about memorizing all the APIs under the sun and just knowing syntax super duper well. Um, being human is a big part of it, and so whatever skills you've developed in that area doing non-technical things um, still makes you valuable, valuable and means that um, other people on the team can already learn from you. So just want to make that point. One thing that uh, actually Miles did this on our first one-on-one, -on -one, but is to ask the other person, like, what's your learning style or what's your communication style and how do you want me to communicate with you? When should I reach out to you? I think that was like super insightful and really helpful to me because now he knows, okay, like I like to be emailed or called or whatever it was. But just like asking that simple question I think is really helpful because then you know, oh, they're not just ignoring me, they just don't check Slack every two minutes. They just like to be emailed. So I think that's something that's super helpful. The most underrated question, like as a mentor, you can answer is why. Like not only how you do something, but why you do it. And as a mentee, making sure you always feel comfortable asking why. Um, but you know, I, I have small, well, they're not small kids anymore. But I have kids. And one of the things kids always do is ask why. Like why do I have to do this? And when it comes to our jobs, why to me always feels like the most important question we ask about everything. And so as a mentor, part of your job is to explain not only how something works, but why we do it that way. So that you, the next time they run across a similar sort of problem, it remembers why they're doing it that way in the first place. I just want to come back to the point where you are modeling your behavior for those that you mentor, or even those that are just in your periphery. Um, I mean, the, the whole mentor-mentee role relationship is to create more mentors. Like, you want your juniors to become seniors. You want the team to function when you're not around. Uh, you want people who at least have some insight into how you think about a problem and solve it. Sorry. <laughs> What are you sorry for? It? I, I, I'm horrified that I've taught people to think the way I think. <laughs> I don't think the way you think, so I know not to do that. Uh, I have one last, I, I sat down because I actually do have a thing to say, uh, and and then we'll be done. I'm sorry, I just decided I was going to steal the last word, and that is that even we experienced hope, seniors, whatever you want to call that, totally need mentors. I need a mentor. Um, at some point, they start calling them coaches instead of mentors. Like, that makes everybody feel better about their experience level. For some and reason. they can charge more. Yeah, yeah. it's given to say that they start charging you money. That's exactly, exactly right. That is exactly right. And anyway, uh, but everybody can use a mentor. It's super valuable. Um, I like to tell people that they should explain this to me very uh, carefully and slowly because I'm too dumb to understand it otherwise. <laughs> I just want to throw that out because I love the part. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, for coming and uh, staying until 8.45. I really appreciate it. Uh, 
I really enjoyed uh, Chris's talk as well as the fishbowl. I hope you all did too. Um, I know we've got a couple people who I am trying to uh, twist their arms into uh, talking next month. Uh, nothing official at the moment, and one of them I am incapable of twisting his arm because he's much larger than I am. Uh, <laughs> it's Seth, guys. It's this guy. Uh, so I can't announce anything official, but I uh, have a couple talks hopefully lined up for July, and we'll see you then. Please eat the pizza. There's just there's some pizza left. Will you please eat it? That it was provided by Lesson Lee, and also Springbok provided the venue, and also Fretless did the thing too. Yay! Yay!